I said uh, previously, yesterday in, in my podcast, my, my Taiwan special, that I was going to say why the Republican Party freed the slaves, northern white people bled and died to kill people that were from slave-owning families in the South, and, and it ended slavery. And the KKK-filled Democrats, including Larry Byrd, famous KKK senator. I think it's B-Y-R-D. Look him up. Famously known for KKK, the the Democrat Party. Or or Democratic Party. There's a, there's a, there's a, sometimes, you know, Republican, like Republican sort of sticks across the board, but like Democrat and Democratic is like a thing. So there are arguments about grammar for how that works. Okay. All right. We got it. We got that out of the way. The KKK filled backed Democratic Party has been marketed as the party that wants to help black people. Black guys in the ghetto want to carry guns. Republicans want to carry guns. Black, or excuse me, not blacks, the black Democrats in Congress and the white Democrats in Congress and the KKKs in the Democrats want to take the guns away. So how come the black guys in the gangs in the city are voting for Democrats? This doesn't make sense to me. How, how, and and there's a reason I'm not just being surprised. The answer is not you're stupid. That's not the answer. Although, you know, human stupidity is to blame for many things. I mean, I myself have participated in stupid groupthink with Bush. I will confess I had my walk away. You know, a lot of conservatives walked away more. There was a huge walk away within the conservative movement over the, over the Bush Karl Rove thing. Because Karl Rove convinced Bush how to like do the Christian churchy church thing. Another thing I don't like about Sunday morning. Oh, that's a whole other topic. I my one of my big walkaways was from Sunday morning. I've written about it. I wrote a book called 95 Theses. It's free. People's Party is another book I wrote. It's free. Look it up. Look my name. It's in the stores and stuff. Amazon, it's 99 cents because you gotta have a price and it's kind of a premium service, but all the other platforms, it's free. But you know what like I've I've written about these things. Politics. Church, we, we can't have the same old, same old. So if you're in the walkaway movement, I want you to know this. Conservatives have been walking away from fake Republicans for years, and it's all connected to the same reason for why Democrats were able to market to black people that they were their friends when they never were, no way, couldn't possibly be even argued. It's, this is the miracle of marketing. You want to know marketing. Study how the Democrats were able to make the world think that they were there to help black people. That, that is, that is marketing, man. Here's how it happened. Have you read the letter from the Birmingham jail? Okay, in case you don't know. The letter from the Birmingham jail was Martin Luther King Jr.'s letter to the American pastors, the white evangelicals. And do you know what the white evangelicals were telling Martin Luther? You ready? I'm going to tell you what the white evangelicals were telling Martin Luther. Here, you're going to find out exactly what they were. I'm going to, you can, in fact, people say this today. What the white evangelicals were telling Martin Luther King Jr. Did I say Martin Luther? I did. Well, I guess I have a lot of respect for the man. Another reformer. Martin Luther was a reformer from the 1500s, if you didn't know that. Okay. All right. Pardon me, we got we got a lot of catch up here to do. Okay, so if you're why is Jesse talking about this stuff? Just part, pardon me, bear with me. Okay, what did the white evangelicals say to Martin Luther? Go, what are we ready? You can find out all the things that they said to, to Martin Luther King Jr. Martin Luther, Martin Luther King Jr. You know what? If I met if MLK Jr. was alive today, I might call him Martin Luther. I'm just saying. I mean, I my teacher called me Jesse Lewis, so you know I I call Martin Luther. I know you're waiting. What did, are you sure you're ready? You're not going to like this. You're not going to like this. The white Republican evangelicals told Dr. King the same thing that the establishment Republicans are telling Donald Trump. I don't know how to solve this problem, but that's not how. Stop making waves. Don't divide the country. Stop making all these fights. You're right, but we've got to be nicer. That's exactly the critique on Trump's style. The people that want 
Trump's agenda, what, what, what Trump's, every politician has an agenda. It's called an agenda. This is jargon. Usually in life, an agenda is kind of like a bad thing. Like if a company has an agenda, that's like bad. But in government, there's a thing called an agenda. It's, it's like your to-do list. It's, this is like political jargon. So Obama had an agenda and it's like, these are the things I'm promising to do. That's like a good thing if you don't know that. All right. So Trump, like every president, Clinton, Obama, every Trump, it's their agenda. And Trump has an agenda. And a lot of conservatives like that. I mean, that's why they voted for him. Okay, all right, all right. So Trump has his list of things to do called an agenda. And he's doing those things. And there are many Republicans who want him to do those things. But they don't like how he does it. Yeah. That's what the white pastors said about Martin Luther King Jr. They, they like what he's doing, but he has to stop it because that's not how. We don't know how to do it. We, we wanted it done and have successfully failed at ever getting it done for 400 years. But, but more importantly than freeing black people and giving them civil rights, we have to not be rude. We have to be nice the whole time while we're doing it. That's what the white pastors said to Dr. King. And when he was in the Birmingham jail, he wrote them a letter that basically told them, uh, maybe Trump was familiar with Dr. King's letter. Well, anyhow, so that's just a little factoid in history. Now, I know some, some librarian, some walking encyclopedia on, on, on Fox had come up. Well, actually, technically, the way that Dr. King said his words was not exactly the same terminology used in Trump's tweets. Someone's going to say that. Uh, doesn't change the point. It's the same critique. Go look it up. Now, this is why I, I promised at the beginning of this, I promised in yesterday's podcast that I was going to say why this explains how the Democratic Party, the KKK, anti-Republican, pro-keep-the-South-in-the-Union Democratic Party, pro-keep-slavery-in-the-South Democratic Party, anti-Republican Party, Lincoln, who wanted to free the slaves, how that Democrat KKK anti-free-the-slaves party was able to be marketed as the party that was helping black people. How was that able to happen? Ahem. Listen to me. It's because the Republicans are nice all the time. The Republicans are so nice and they're so get along with everybody. Let's be friends all the time. Let's not make people angry. That's why. In fact, with McCain and Romney, those big nothing burgers, and then you've got H.W. Bush, Another nothing burger? Massive nothing burgers were reasons that conservatives have wanted to walk away from the Republican Party for a long time. So if you're in the hashtag walkaway movement, guess what? The walkaway movement's done already been there. And we need to get on board with the People's Party. So start it. If you want to start your own political party, go do it. People's Party should be able to work with it. A plurality of parties would be a good idea, I think. You know, it's written into the People's Party. Look it up. Free book. You can buy a printed version. People's Party. See, by not doing what needs to be done in the name of not making waves, getting along with everybody, that's how the Democratic Party was able to be seen as, as, as what it's opposite of. All right. So, here I am. As, as the American who's lived in Taiwan all these years. And from my time living over here, the government never making sure that I had my work permit and then the government telling me, sure, you can have permanent residence if you show us all your work permits, which we made sure we had lots of ways that your boss could keep it from you. Uh, I know what it means to have the system against me. I know I've seen it. I've been over here and I've seen it. I've lived with a system against me. And so as we're doing this walk away movement thing, and as people are getting irritated with the political parties, let us not forget, that's all I'm saying. I see, I've always been an advocate for leave the past and 
let's not live in the past. And yes, it's true. Every day has a new battle. I mean, that's the thing. Slavery and racism are so incredibly evil that it takes years and years and years to get rid of them. That's how evil slavery is. But the problem is the battle's new every day. And the KKK pro-slave Democrat party wants to fight yesterday's battle today because one, it's familiar to everybody and two, it's guaranteed to lose. And so three, they can keep pretending to fight and keep getting elected doing nothing. It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful losing winning strategy. Beautiful. A lot of people call that consulting. You know, the consultant comes in and he perpetuates the problem so that you keep needing him. Uh, you know, it's like a, like a, you know, it's like a self-perpetuating fake business. It's a business, it's a business model. Actually, it's a business model. Keep the problem going, you know, pour pine salt in, in the kid's chicken soup. So the kid stays sick and needs to keep eating chicken soup and eventually dies. And nobody knows why. After all, we gave him all that chicken soup. Yeah. Well, it was poisoned, you know? Okay. All right. All right. Well, I'm, I'm out of time for today.